All right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, today I got a lot on the table. So I'm going to just go over uh, as briefly as I can uh, each particular topic. And I can't even tell you it's going to be it's going to be a variety of stuff, and I'm going to try to close it on close it um, on the Revelation 20 stuff if I can do this correctly. We'll just see how it goes. Okay, first of all, I got a comment from Capern Igas. Capern Igas. Uh, he asked, he says, you think the earth is flat? Yeah, that You know, that's a great question. And, um, you know, if you were yeah, familiar with my channel, you would, you would, you wouldn't be asking that question. Right. Um, it's interesting, though. It's a it's a great question. I want to talk a little bit more about that uh, after. Well, let me just say, no, the Earth is not flat, and I know I got all these flat Earth videos, okay, from ten from ten years ago, and so on and so forth. But um, the flat Earth is just a you know something that people ridicule so I'll use that uh, the fact of the matter is the earth is not flat it's bumpy alright so I'm not a flat earther I'm a bumpy earther okay and so let's get into yeah I wanna show a thank you for that question by the way I wanna show you a video from this kid here if you been watching me, uh, keeping up on me. I've uh, played a, uh, I've you know analyzed this guy before, and he's great. But he's he's got the wrong Bible. It's it's incredible to me that how's he coming up with all this stuff. Uh, you know because it seems like he's the only one that's really. You know, taking things to the, to the next level, and so he's got a video here. Did Elijah and Enoch really go to heaven? So I'm just going to play a few seconds. Enoch and Elijah both went up to heaven, and they never died. They're the only two people in human history who have never died. But let's just see what the Bible says about this. We have Genesis chapter five. All right, so hold on. All right, so it's popular to believe that Enoch and Elijah both went up to heaven, and they never died. They're the only. All right, so that's 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 right. It's popular to believe those two guys never died, but they did die. They are <clears throat> they are dead right now. All right, they are not resurrected, and they have not ascended to heaven. All right, and so he goes in. He basically goes into that uh, in explaining exactly as I have taught you, and that the Bible teaches us that that they did not um, like uh, Enoch, for example. He did not experience death. He was translated from life to death. And what happens to Elijah, we don't know. It doesn't. The Bible doesn't say. Just that God took him away. And so I don't want to get it. I know people, you know, if you want me to get into it, I will. <clears throat> Excuse me. But uh, the scripture is very clear on this. The Okay, just as I explained it, um, Jesus says in John chapter 3, verse 13, that no man has ascended to heaven, but the Son of Man, which is from heaven. So let's go to it before I butcher it. All right. No man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. That's Jesus. Only Jesus has resurrected and ascended to heaven so this is one of the issues I had <clears throat> even before I was a believer you know back in 1996 I think it was I uh, my friend encouraged me to read John chapter you know just to start reading from the book of John okay so I get I get three or four uh, chapters into it in 1997 I go to a church on a Thursday night and uh, one of the first things the preacher says is that his mom is up in heaven looking down on him right now. 
And I thought, well, that's not what the Bible, I just read that in the Bible. That's not what the Bible says. How can, how can Jesus say, no man has ascended to heaven, but now you say your mom's in heaven? That's a contradiction. That's a problem. Now, I wasn't even a believer. I was just interested in what, what's going on in the churches. All right, so, and then, of course, there was, I had an issue with, at, at the end, the, the same guy, he's, he's throwing oil on people. Got oil all over my shirt. Ruined it. Anyways, that's another story. And that, that actually, that wasn't the highlight of the evening. The highlight of the evening was all these people, blah, 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 blah. They were doing this goofy, blah, 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 you know. I don't know what it was. It looked like they were insane. Well, it's come to find out it's just a misunderstanding of what the word tongues mean. Anyways, I don't want to get into that. But then we can also go to Acts chapter 2 and see that David himself. So Jesus says, no man has ascended to heaven. Acts 2 verse 34, for David has not ascended to heaven. So no man has ascended to heaven, not even David, but your mom has. Now, you know, this is a tough, uh, sensitive subject because people want to believe that their loved ones are in heaven. Well, <clears throat> the fact of the matter is nobody goes to heaven until the end of the world. <clears throat> All right, so that's when, <clears throat> excuse me, that's when uh, everybody um, is, uh, you know, that's judgment day. <laughs> Just like what we read in, in Daniel 12, verse 2, uh, for example. And this is supported all throughout the Bible. All right, so Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. Many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Well, if the, all the dead ones are up in heaven now, there wouldn't be anybody that are asleep in the dust of the earth. And there wouldn't be anybody to awake. And then, of course, we can go to... Oops. Excuse me. We can go to... First uh, Thessalonians 4 for example and we read that at the end of the world at the last trump the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise first well if they already are in heaven then they wouldn't rise up and ascend to heaven and then we wouldn't be caught up together with them in the clouds if they're already there they wouldn't I mean it doesn't make any sense. So, it's just amazing. How can you be a, pre a preacher of God and teach this idea <clears throat> that your loved ones are in heaven? When the end of the world hasn't clearly has not happened yet. All right, so, anyways, moving on. Uh, so, that's basically, uh, you know, Elijah and Enoch, Enoch are not... In heaven at all, I suppose, since I'm right here. Let's go to, oops. Now, in regards to Elijah here, I better just, I got to point these verses out. Just so there's no uncertainty, I guess. Um, Hebrews 11, verse 5, by faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. He didn't, ex he didn't go through that. You think about how Jesus went through death and how painful of an experience that must have been. And it's painful for everybody that experiences death, that phase, whether it's short or long, um, that experience of dying. Uh, that's part of life. But to me, this has to be that Enoch was translated in other words he did not experience that phase of dying he just instantly was translated from life to death I don't think there's any other way to view this verse and then of course Elijah I wonder if I should do this here Um, I 
think this is the one, is it not, or is it this one? Okay, it's this one, I think. Anyways, um, and it came to pass as they went on and talked that, behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder, and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. All right, and so also we read this here in um, verse 1. Oh. Forgive me if I'm not getting thorough in uh, in this, but the idea, or basically here, what did I say, verse one? Where am I at here? Oh, all right. <laughs> all right. So, uh, and it came to pass when the Lord took up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went in with Elisha. Elisha, I can't say names, from Gilgal, and Elijah said unto Elisha, Tarry here, I pray thee, for the Lord has sent me to Bethel. And Elisha said unto him, As the Lord liveth, and thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. So they went down to Bethel. Alright, so, <clears throat> clearly, Elijah was not taken up to, you know, what, the throne of God? And he was not resurrected, was not transformed into an incorruptible body. He wasn't, this didn't happen here in verse 1. And it doesn't happen down here in verse, uh, verse 11. Okay. And it came to pass as they went on and talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire and parted them both asunder and Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Where he goes from there. It's not known. It does not say. All right, but by reading verse one, we can see that when it happened that time, it, he was just taken to another place. All right. So, if in order to say that Elijah was taken up to heaven and um, is up there with Jesus right now, is to say Jesus is a liar. All right, and to say that the Bible's a lie because it says not even David has ascended to heaven okay I already showed you those verses all right there shouldn't be any mistake about it those they're it's not talking about David and, or uh, I'm sorry Elijah and Enoch are not up in heaven with Jesus right now waiting for us all right okay so let's move on uh, so that's a that's a great that's essentially what he says all right Essentially what he says, um, the, the problem, two problems I guess I have with this video is that he's using the, you know, the, the what do you call them, the corrupt Bible versions. And, you know, I, I got questions of, I, <laughs> I wonder how, uh, how do you explain, right, I'm not going to get into that. Oops. Let's go to the end here. Enoch and Elijah were taken into heaven. I do believe they were taken into heaven. Just which heaven are you talking about? Are you talking about the birds of heaven, the first heaven, or even outer space, the stars of heaven? There's some astronauts who've been up to heaven, the second heaven. Uh, no. Wrong. There are not astronauts in heaven. And so that got me to thinking... And so I was going through, you know, some of my videos here and trying to look for one particular example I gave for exactly how corrupt the Bible versions are and how insane these people are that, that teach this idea that we've been to the moon. It's insanity. And how it, I want to show how it connects to the Bible versions. This world may have blinded me, but the Lord has let me see. Yeah, I love that scene there. So let's keep going here.
That's pretty good, huh? No. Uh, and he got 250,000 hits. I can easily beat that, obviously. I went out this afternoon with a camera crew. You know what that means? Field piece. Hey, I'm going to make a viral video. Look at that American flag up there on the moon. That was very impressive until you realize one thing. It was fake. Yeah, it was fake. It was fake. Okay, so... And, you know, it's interesting because this you, this young fella here, what, wherever this guy is, he's, uh, he, he's not, you know, he's not 50, he's not 51 years old. If you, think about it, if you're 50 years old, if you're born after 1972, okay, no man has ever ascended, or no man has gone to the moon in your lifetime. That's insane. Well, why? It's been 50 years. You think about, you know, how great your iPhone is, or your, your Apple phone, or whatever they're called. You know, you you got these phones. You can just you can do all kinds of stuff with. It's crazy what you can do with the phone. You got incredible technology just in your phone, all throughout your house, in your car. You know, so I, somebody in my family recently bought an electric car. Wow. But yet we can't go to the moon? Come on, man. We already went there 53 years ago. Or 54 years ago, man. Jeez. So it's crazy. All right, it's crazy. So where am I at here? All right, so I want to I want to show something that I find particularly interesting here in NIV Job 26 verse 9. Okay, so I want you I want to show you something here. This is the King James the King James Bible here. And I'm going to type in moon. And you notice there are zero results in Job chapter 26 for the moon. But yet, here it is in the NIV in Job chapter 26. Now, that's odd, isn't it? Why would the word moon be used in the NIV, but not the King James Bible? And isn't that strange that they would put the word moon in there? You read from the King James, it says... He holdeth back the face of his throne, and spreadeth his cloud upon it. So the NIV replaces throne with the word moon. He covers the face of the full moon, spreading his clouds over it. You know, like a rocket ship. Huh? I think about that. In other words, they are making these astronauts out to be gods and conquerors of heaven. And I'm not I'm not exaggerating here. I fully firmly 100% believe that this is exactly the intent of those deceivers to present themselves as conquerors of both earth and heaven and I don't believe at all this is a new thing but an age-old thing that has been going on for a very long time and we read about it numerous times all throughout the Bible you think about Isaiah 14 for thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend to the moon. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. He holds back the face of his throne. He covers the face of the full moon. To me, this is an obvious parallel. I'll right, exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will 
sit also upon the mount of congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the cloud. I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell. To me this is a very obvious parallel. Alright, so and the NIV is of the same mindset that the world is has, right? The mindset of NASA and man has conquered heaven and earth. And to me it's just wow. These guys lied and they don't know how to get out of their lie. They're stuck in a lie. And you, look, I watch all these true crime shows. Isn't it interesting that you watch all these, uh, a lot of times, the you know, it's almost always the spouse that kills the, you know, the wife or whatever. Okay, so what happens? Uh, well, they, they tell a lie. And they live a lie. And then when their lie gets exposed, the only way out is for them to kill. You think about that. So they're okay as long as they're not exposed, but once they're exposed, they kill. Because the end of their lie is death. So, you know, they're cheating on their... Um, it's typically t cheating on their their wife right and so ultimately they're gonna despise their wife and, and want to go after the the other one and the end of that is death for the wife and so you compare that to what we're experiencing in this world now with these liars they say they went to the moon and they didn't and so this only leads to death. And so how, you know, what's going to happen? Are they going to try to kill everybody? Well, I think a strong case could be made. That's what they're doing now. Um, you know, uh, through various, uh, many different forms in many different ways. But where are they headed to? You know, when they talk about, you know, going to Mars, they're not going to Mars. Right? Where are they headed to? They don't, because their whole foundation is based on a lie. So, if anybody were to push them and, and force their hand, if you will, they would be put in a position where they'd have to kill and it's just a it's a crazy situation really because these are evil men that are running this country and ultimately the men at the very top the man at the very top is uh, is at the very pinnacle or pyramid very top of evil all right so we got Jesus Christ who is God Almighty who is everything good and then we got the man of sin here on earth that represents everything evil and so evil men are running this world and this world is coming to an end and uh, thank God for that so anyways I just want to you know go over that a little bit to me it's very interesting this is another example of how crazy the corrupt Bible versions are and again I encourage you all to get a King James Bible it is the pure word of God in the English language so all right here's a, a video I'm gonna end it on this here in time watch man watch man all right so let's listen to what he has to say Jesus Christ so we have a going up we have a coming down, 33, technically 33 years later, of uh, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, he goes back up, and in 2,000 years, he comes back down 
back to Jerusalem to set his feet on the Mount of Olives, the Mount of Olives split, and then he sets up, sets up his millennial kingdom in Jerusalem. Wrong. 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 I mean, why do these guys... They're nothing but liars. You know, I had a, that comment yesterday or the other day about, well, I'm the only one that got it right. Well, no. Jesus has got it right, and all these guys are liars. And I want to show you, so hold on. I'm going to show you more lies from that guy. But here in, oh, wait, where am I at here? In Luke chapter 1, verse 33. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob for ever and of his kingdom there shall be no end Jesus Christ reigns forever that's crystal clear you have to scratch that part out of your Bible and not just that part but every single mention of the Lord Jesus Christ and everlasting life from everlasting to everlasting the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end you have to just throw out your entire Bible and just say to hell with Jesus I'm God Almighty and you can just wear a tattoo on your forehead saying I'm believing me or whatever I mean come on man what what is up with these people that continuously say well Jesus is going to reign for a thousand years in the future that suggests or implies that Jesus doesn't reign right now you're out you're out of your mind you're stupid and you don't know the Bible at all you're a liar this crosses over the line of just being, well, I just made a mistake, got it wrong a little bit. No, this is flat out lying. What kind of religion are they teaching? They're pretending to be Christians, aren't they? They look like Christians, they talk like Christians, they talk about Jesus and the Bible, but they're not Christians at all. In Matthew 24, Jesus is asked specifically, what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? And Jesus answers and says, take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. And what do we got in the world today? Deceiver after deceiver after deceiver. Now let's go back to the very beginning and listen to what he has to say. And I want to get more into this, showing you this guy is a flat out liar. My channel, my name is Patrick. Thank you for all the likes, comments, subscribe. So, just to be fair here, he's just he's just like all the others that are falsely teaching. He's one of you know one of the ninety nine point nine percent of the preachers that are getting it wrong. I mean, uh, donations. I never asked for, but if you donated, I really appreciate it. Um, I got another video for you. I wasn't was not planning on doing another video today. Um, I was supposed to help my parents. Um, they had some stuff being delivered and all kinds of things they needed a lawnmower put together. Well, plans have changed and it seems like it's going to be a lot longer than they're expecting. And so they said, forget it. My dad wound up taking the day off. And so I was free to, I had some videos like piling up. So I'm going to get another video out today. Um, but first, before I get into the new stuff, you know, I just wanted to say thank you. You guys are growing the channel. I really appreciate it. Um, I had another dream last night, so before I get into this, I want to get into the dream. Actually, I had two. Um, one was like right as I was falling asleep, and then one was obviously when I was like dead, dead out of it in the middle of the night kind of dream. So my dream, it was me walking down like a city sidewalk, city street, and it was completely dark and gray outside. It's absolutely miserable. And what I thought was snow coming down absolute city street so my one was obviously what i was like um one was like right night so before i get into this i want to get into the dream actually i had two i actually had two you heard that right he sucked me i had dreams i actually had two i actually had two dreams and he's going to talk about his dream and he's going to talk about nuclear fallout and all this weirdo stuff but I want I wanted to highlight the fact that he said I had two I had a dream I actually had two that's very interesting it's very interesting I want to show you why here in a second oh if I can figure out where it was at oh oh where are we at here man I forgot there it is very first one Jeremiah 23 starting at verse 25 
I have heard what the prophets said. Oops. That prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed. I have dreamed. I had another dream last night, so before I get into this, I want to get into the dream. Actually, I had two. I have dreamed. I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yeah, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart. This is, it's so disgusting that not just that these guys are liars, but that it's disgusting that people are believing the liars. It's, it is disgusting. It, even though the Bible does tell us this is ex exactly what will go on at the end of the world. Or as we get closer to the end of the world. Right? Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And that's exactly what we're seeing happening today. And, you know, you think about the sign of the times, man. Uh, it's not Dan Rather coming on television and telling us, oh, we're on the brink of war, World War Three. That has nothing, absolutely nothing at all to do with the sign of the end of the world. And Jesus is very clear about this. And he's asked specifically about that. The signs are not what you see on Fox News and CNN. The sign is the deceivers that are all around us in the world today. When Jesus is asked about the sign, what will be the signs to look for? And the very first thing he says is, Take heed that no man deceive you. In case that wasn't enough for you, he says, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. For many shall come in my name, saying, I, Jesus, am Christ, and shall deceive many. I mean, he just, he hammers this home, man. It's all about the deceivers and the deceptions that's in the world today. And many shall arise, or many shall rise, or many false prophets shall rise and, and shall deceive many. False Christ, false prophets shall show great signs and wonders insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold! I have told you before, and behold, what are we seeing now? Liar after liar after liar. Just, we're in a world of S-H poop. We are. And this world's come to an end, and, and it's, it's amazing to me how anybody could look at everything that's going on in the world and not realize this world cannot sustain itself. It's coming to an end. I don't care, you know, if you're watching Fox News and CNN, you, you still ought to be able to see it. This world is no good. No good at all. And thank God it's coming to an end. And thank God that God has provided us an, a, a scapegoat, a way out. Just like he provided the people of... Uh, the children of Israel a way out of Egypt Moses led them out of G out of Egypt and so also will Jesus lead us out of this wicked world now I said I was going to get into Revelation 20 and uh, so this is all nonsense and if you have questions uh, let me try to clear up every single thing that is written in Revelation 20 to me, it's almost like people are basing a whole new religion on one chapter of the Bible. And this whole doctrine that these guys teach regarding Revelation 20, it's contrary, contradictory to the rest of the Bible. That, that alone should tell you that there's a problem with what they're teaching. Now, this stuff here in Revelation 20 is, is simple. It's hard to get beyond all the liars that teach this. I get it. 
it's like you know they they develop a worldview for you and you know it's easier to lie to somebody than it is to convince them that they've been lied to but let's take a look at Revelation 20 and if you have any uncertainty hopefully I can provide you some clarity today now Revelation 20 and I saw an angel come down from heaven let's go to Revelation chapter 1 first because it's important to establish what the book of Revelation is about verse 1 the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John these are visions that are given to John by his angel to show him and us things which must shortly come to pass and so in Revelation 20 when we see an angel come down from heaven this is another vision given by the angel to John to show us things which must shortly come to pass this is not at all a continuation of Revelation 19 all right don't let the liars deceiver and the ignorant deceive you okay mislead you confuse you in any sort of way this is a vision and it says it di directly to you that this is an angel this is a vision that is being shown to you very clearly and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years all right so just from a logical standpoint this clearly suggests that Satan was not bound until this happened and then when this happened then Satan is bound and then we see that afterward Satan will no longer be bound and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled and after that he must be loosed a little season now keep in mind this is not talking about individuals this is talking about nations now it's very easy to understand if you've read the entire Bible then you would know that in the Old Testament there was one country one group one nation of people it was the children of Israel the kingdom of God belonged to the children of Israel and outside of that nation were the nations deceived they were deceived by Satan <laughs> there's nobody else to deceive them, right? So that should be very clear if you have understanding of the Bible at all simple understanding really then you should know that now if you know the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ the good news and everlasting life then you should know verse 4 and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them so we can go back to Revelation 1 for example in, in talking about Jesus has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever amen Jesus has made us kings and priests unto God and his Father he has made us royalty we are kings unto God we're not earthly kings we're heavenly kings and our thrones are not on earth our thrones are in heaven and I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them well, let's go to John chapter 11 for example there's so many examples to give keep that in mind John chapter 11 Jesus says unto her I am the resurrection and the life he that believeth in me though he were dead yet shall he live and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die right now we have eternal life we that are born of God we have everlasting life that means the judgment of God has already been given to us we are set forever we are sealed secure sanctified saved forever that can never change 
judgment's already been given to us. We are kings and priests unto God. We sit on heavenly thrones. That's talking about us. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for a witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast. This is clearly speaking of the time that we're in now. From the time of baby Jesus to the time of his return. Now we already read about some of this in the Bible, in the, in the new, in the, you know, in the Testament where like, like um, John the Baptist, for example, was beheaded, right? Um, so this is very clear that this is speaking of the time we're in now. Uh, there's no way to get around it. Um, you have to have a willful ignorance of you know, what happened to John, for example, and you have to have a willful ignorance of um, the the mark of the beast. And the, I know the futurists like to say, "Oh, that's going to happen in the in the future." Uh, you know, I don't understand it, so I just, "Oh, that's going to happen in the future. Don't worry about it." Well, no, it's it's happening right now. You're just failing to see it. All right. Now it says, "And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years." It makes no mention at all of Christ reigning a thousand years. It says that they, meaning us, that are born of God, we live and reign with Christ right now, and it's a unique time period. It's a time period unlike what it was like before baby Jesus came along, and it's unlike the time period that is coming after the return of our Lord Jesus Christ very unique time period where the judgment or where the the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ it's a very unique limited time period that we're living in right now but the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished this is the first resurrection this right here simply indicates to us that at the end of the thousand years is the end of this world. There's no way around it. No way around it. This is the first res. Blessed are the rest. Blessed. I'm sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So let's go to 1 Corinthians 15. And we read here that every man in his own order, right? Every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ that is coming. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they that are Christ that is coming. Then comes the end. So, Jesus Christ is our Christ, He is our leader. We follow him. He has led the way. He has died, rose from the dead, ascended up to heaven with the promise that he will return for us. And so we will follow him from the grave and then being risen from the grave and ascend up into heaven to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. This is consistent all throughout the Bible. All throughout the Bible. Alright, so make no mistake about it. We follow him. Now, Jesus has resurrected. We just read that in John chapter 11. Alright, if you were paying attention, <laughs> if you're paying attention, you saw, you saw what, you, what I read for you in John chapter 11. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection. Now, you want to say Jesus is not the first resurrection? All right, well, just be honest and say that you're the resurrection, that you're God Almighty and, and just whatever. You know, just be honest. That's what you believe. You, you believe that Jesus, yeah, he resurrected, but that doesn't count. Oh, just, just be honest and admit you don't believe you, that you think that he did this all in vain. All right, just be honest. That's what you believe. Just be honest. 
it's very clear to me that Jesus is the first resurrection and we are partakers of his resurrection. Verse 6, blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. Again, this is very clearly saying that these people are not the first resurrection. Rather, they are taking part in the first resurrection, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. We are partakers of his resurrection resurrection because he is our Christ he is our leader and we follow him he is the resurrection we don't do any of this on our own we can't do anything without him blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. The second death has no power over us that are born of God. This could not be easier to understand. This could not be more simple. This could not be any clearer than what it is. If you understand the rest of the Bible, this stuff ought to be simple. But I'm telling you, there are a bunch of liars out there who are, they themselves are deceived, and they're standing on pulpits pretending to be experts, and they don't know squat. And so what I'm going to implore is that you believe the Bible that you hold in your hands, believe it to be from God, because it is, just as the tables of stone that were given to Moses from God in the mountain that they were written with the finger of God Moses got the Bible if you will directly from God so also have we gotten the Bible directly from God and it's in the King James Bible. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. All right. The Holy Ghost is the Spirit of God. It is God. And so the Bible comes directly from God. And then we, of course, we've been warned and warned and warned over and over. And we've seen examples in the Old Testament of people corrupting the Word of God. And just liars everywhere. Oops. No, this is it. For we are not as many which corrupt the Word of God. So there are deceivers out there. It's very clear all throughout the Bible. And they are corrupting the Word of God. It only stands to reason that people would do that and why do they do that they do that to make money to peddle their Bible versions and make money all right so let's get back to Revelation 20 and when the thousand years are expired wait did I read the rest of that no I'm sorry I didn't get all the way through that blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years now we're called to preach the gospel to every creature right we can go to Exodus 19 and see <clears throat> excuse me we can see in Exodus 19 that God says to the children of Israel ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And keep that in mind. In First Peter chapter is it four or two? I don't remember now. I think it's two. I think I clicked the wrong chapter. Yeah, I'm just guessing. Right there in <clears throat> verse nine. <clears throat> Excuse me, but he, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Right now, we 
that are born of God. We are a royal priesthood. We're royalty. We are kings and priests unto God. Right? We read that in Revelation 1, right? We are kings and priests unto God. And we are, to me, a kingdom of priests. We are a royal priesthood. And here in Revelation 20, they shall be priests of God in Christ. We are called to preach the gospel to every creature. And we reign with Christ right now during this unique time period which is called a thousand years and when the thousand years are expired it's the end of the world and when it's the end of the world what happens well at the end of the world is the with the trump of God for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord same thing that we're reading in Matthew 24 Mark 13 Luke 21 and also here in 1st Corinthians 15 where Paul writes I will behold I will show you mystery we will shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed this happens at the end of the world there shouldn't be any mistake about it all right but every man in his own order christ the first fruits afterward they that are christ at his coming then comes the end for he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet now this is a prophecy fulfilled that goes all the way back to genesis 3 verse 15 when the lord said to the serpent I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. It's the end of the world. Just like in, in Psalm 110. Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. All right, this is a prophecy all throughout the Bible that's being fulfilled. All right, we just read that in, in 1 Corinthians 15. He must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. And of course in Revelation 3 verse 9 it says behold I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee all right so this is a prophecy being fulfilled at the end of the world which is at the end of the thousand years when we are lifted up in the air make no mistake about it we are lifted up in the air and again and I probably already said this but in Matthew 24 for example uh, the angels of heaven gather together his elect we're gathered together and taken up in the, into the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord and also the parable of the wheat and the tares in Matthew 13 where the harvest is the end of the world and the wheat are gathered into my barn which is up in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord so when Satan is loose now think about this remember what it was like before baby Jesus came along in the Old Testament there was this one nation one country one group of people right it was the the nation of Israel and then outside of that nation were the nations deceived that the kingdom of God was within the children of Israel one country one group of people one nation outside of that nation there was not the kingdom of God all right those nations were deceived by Satan now here comes Jesus and he makes the kingdom of God available to whosoever believes in him right he even says that the nation of God or the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth the fruits thereof all right so the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ all right so that therefore Satan's bound he, he cannot deceive the nations like he did before but now here comes the end of the world and we are lifted up into the air to meet the Lord in the air and so all the people that are left that are remaining on the earth they are not saved they are not the kingdom of God is not with them but the kingdom of God is with us that are up in the air there is this great separation okay 
and then now Satan can he can go out and deceive the nations like he had done before because there are no saved people on the earth all we're all up in the air with the Lord now Satan can deceive the nations like he had done once before and he go and he shall go out and deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth Gog and Magog to gather them together to battle the number of whom is as the sand of the sea and they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about the beloved city so that's when we're up in the air and our enemies gathered at our feet just like what we read in Genesis 3 it shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent destroying all iniquity forever fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them all and then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory all right, it's the end of the world man it's judgment day it's the great day of the Lord this is when all evil will be destroyed all right this is it's very clear very simple it's very consistent with everything that we're reading all throughout the Bible all right, and then here in verse 10 it says and the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast and false prophet are we just read about that in, in chapter 19 how the beast and the false prophet are thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone. All, right, the, all this is telling us is the devil is being thrown into the same place that you just read about. This is not happening after. This is happening at the same time. All you have to do is connect the dots. There's not going to be an end of the world and then another end of the world. That's ridiculous. You can't have two ends of the worlds. All right. All this is telling us is that the devil is being thrown into the same place that you just read about in the previous chapter. It's not, well, a thousand years later. No, it's not it at all. There's only one end of the world. If there were two ends of the world, then the first end of the world was not the end of the world. All right. And uh, you, you got a real problem when uh, you're teaching something that doesn't jive with the rest of the Bible. All right, this stuff is very simple. I know, you know, this won't. People aren't going to make movies. They're not going to be able to write books. And you know, it doesn't fit the sci-fi narrative. I get it. It's very simple truth. And it's very easy to see in the Bible, and it's very unpopular. I get it. Now, verse 11 here. This has always uh, been very strange to me because this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Just like what we read in Matthew 24. Uh, oops. Matthew 24. Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. This is a parallel with what we're reading here in verse 11. Whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. This is the end of the world. This is Jesus. Who sits on the white throne? It's Jesus. All right, and I saw a great white throne and him that sat upon it. It's Jesus. Okay, and this is just a description of the judgment of God. And uh, to me, it shows the importance of believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, it's There's nothing more important. There's nothing more important than believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and having the Spirit of God being born of God there's not one single thing that is more important in your life than being given the Spirit of God and everlasting life and it's, the Bible's very clear we are saved by grace through faith and not of ourselves it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast now we all know there's a judgment day coming and Revelation 20 clearly tells us there is a judgment day coming it's the great day of the Lord all right is appointed unto man once to die and then after this the judgment and here in Revelation 20 we have the judgment it's not the only place in the Bible that has the judgment it's all throughout the Bible and I found many places in the book of Revelation here 
And, uh, you know, we're putting our hope, our faith, everything, our hopes and dreams, if you will, in eternal life without all the corruption that, and wickedness that we see in this world. We're putting our hope into eternal life. We are not putting our hope into a bonus thousand years. And that's essentially what all these liars are doing. Oh, after the end of the world, we get a bonus thousand years where Jesus reigns. No, we're not putting our hope in that at all. We're putting, we're putting our hope into the fact that when Jesus comes, he's going to stamp out, stomp out all evil forever. When he comes in the clouds of heaven, he's going to destroy evil. And then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. You're teaching something stupid and goofy when you talk about, oh, Jesus is going to reign a thousand years later. No, he reigns forever. And of his kingdom, there is no end. All right, fellas, have a good day.